Hi guys, this is Pestoy and welcome to another Skate for Taco video. Today I'm doing something I very, very rarely do. I actually don't like doing them very often. And that's uh, responding or reacting to the financial report that killed Taco. Now this video, um, I've already watched, but I, there's a lot of things I want to discuss in a little bit more detail. Um, I'll have links below. It's definitely a video worth watching. And uh, I think it's breaks a lot of points that people are going to discuss with in the future and want to know more about. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. All right, so just briefly, this video is pretty much going over why Escape for Tarkov has brought in microtransactions and it's discussing in, in more detail microtransactions and the state of Tarkov's financials. So there's a fair few points to cover. So let's get straight into it. Now, I'm going to skip through some of the parts that have more story based behind it, but uh, ultimately, you should definitely watch this video as a whole as its own entity because it's a very well narrated video. Why I'm presenting it to you at all. It's important to understand why any of this matters. Since the start of development in 2016, BSG held a firm stance against the monetization models of their contemporaries. We we know that free-to-play developers are constantly inventing new ways to trick people and make more money. And we personally do not want to spoil Escape from Dark with this. Now, I've also made a full video on microtransactions and this presentation from BSG. Uh, I'll have a link down below for that one if you want to go check out that video. And I talk about microtransactions in quite detail in that video. And statement by the company over the last year also pointed not only to the stability of their funding, but that they were actually closer than ever to being completely finished with Tarkov as a product, that they were fully funded and pushing towards a 1.0 release, a reality supported in no small part by the removal of the most expensive limited edition of the game from the online store. To many of us, it felt like we were finally, finally closing in on the finish line. Now, I'd like to point out that there was actually a fair bit of pressure of people saying, hey, when are you going to actually remove Edge of Darkness? Because uh, they said it was a limited edition, yet it had been available for like seven years. So BSG had been getting a lot of messages like over the last few years saying, hey, you said Edge of Darkness is going to be limited edition. I also think the pressures of the fact that uh, when they released Arena, they were originally going to make it, you had to buy Arena and everyone with Edge of Darkness saying, well, Edge of Darkness says you get free DLCs, so why can't I get Arena? So one of the other things they removed Edge of Darkness for was the fact that they didn't want to have to, they wanted to monetize anything they released moving forward and not have everyone who had Edge of Darkness complain the fact that they should be getting it for free because they paid for it and they got every DLC included for having Edge of Darkness. So I don't think they removed Edge of Darkness primarily because it was close to 1.0. I think they removed edge of darkness uh, more for the fact that uh they wanted to be able to monetize people buying stuff that was being released moving forward being dlcs and arena now should they be releasing dlcs before 1.0 that's a totally different discussion probably saying no or definitely saying no here um but yeah that is more of the reason than being close to 1.0 i would say however here that after the most recent patch uh, point 14 this is the closest like this actually gave me the first patch that gave me faith that escape from tarkov would release 1.0 in my lifetime but the fact that they they delivered so much in that patch that realistically all they need to do to finish escape from tarkov if they really wanted to is finish the map terminal which is the map that you escape from tarkov in and also do the main storyline which is meant to be somewhere between 80 and 120 quests with cinematics and stuff, or at least this is what they told me in the last five or six years. And if they were to actually put those quest line together uh, with the map terminal, and then you'd be able to technically leave Escape from Tarkov and, and win the game. So realistically, they actually could be very close to finishing it and we don't even know it. And so yeah, I wanted to put that into perspective. So I don't think they removed Edge of Darkness purely for the fact that it was close to 1.0. I think it's because they wanted to be able to monetize stuff that they released moving forward. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, in the middle of otherwise innocuous patch notes, Tarkov's first microtransactions, namely extra stash lines regardless of game edition, ability to play offline co-op, and faster unlocks of cosmetic clothing. What changed? Here was this claim by the CEO of the company saying, in not so many words, that the game needed more funding. So, like, where did all the money go? How is BSG spending their money, and why? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. And after looking through their financials, the answer was, well, it's honestly easier explained if we just look at it together. Now, these financials have actually been available pretty much every year for the last, I don't know, since the existence of Escape from Tarkov. And it's it's not been like constantly talked about, but it has been talked about before how much Escape from Tarkov was actually made and lost and all that stuff. Before we do, I need to lay some ground rules for what I'm presenting here. I'm going to be as objective and fact-based as possible. However, my takeaways from it will be subjective and you may disagree with them. 
First off, BSG's financials are more than a little weird. Because Battlestates Development Studios are operating in St. Petersburg, Russia, they are actually officially based out of what is, as far as I can tell, a WeWork shell office in London. What matters is, because this is a UK-based company, their financial records are completely publicly available. So I took a look at them. Now that's not something that's new for companies around the world ever. Uh, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but people can put their companies based in different countries to avoid paying taxes, uh, going by different laws and all that kind of stuff. So that's nothing new to people. Shouldn't be like, oh my God, I can't believe they do that. Financial year ending January 31st, 2023, Battlestate Games had a turnover or total revenue of 65,608,544 Great British Pounds. That's 83,911,112 US dollars. There's a little overview statement at the top of the filing. BSG's primary source of revenue, Escape from Tarkov, added more than 900,000 new paid players in the 2022 year. 900,000. That means, on average, those 900,000 players were paying 93 US dollars for their copy of Escape from Tarkov, meaning that there was a good mix of both Edge of Darkness and similar limited edition orders, as well as standard editions in there. You can take whatever you'd like away from that, but moving on, here's where it gets interesting. The cost of sales in 2022, as in how much Battlestate Games spent to distribute this product, was around 79.5 million US dollars. That means that by January 31st, 2023, they had a gross profit and loss of 2.4 million pounds, ending in with operating costs, investments, expenses, and taxes subtracted, a total profit of 2,178,371 US dollars. We can see that their cost of sales were just under their total revenue that year. If we look at 2021, they didn't even manage that. According to their profit and loss reports, BSG actually ended 2021 with a loss of 905,724 US dollars. That year, they reported an 88.6 million US dollar total revenue. Now, I probably should elaborate here. I am not a like financial expert. I don't have financial advice here and don't listen to me on how to do this, but it's not uncommon for businesses to make it so their company doesn't make massive amounts of profit on their books so therefore they aren't paying as much taxes. Particularly, I can imagine the taxes in the UK being a lot more than say the taxes in Russia or other, other places. So it's not uncommon for a company to wanna to make it so their books are as close to zero as possible. So it's not like they're actually running at such a loss that the, 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 you know, the company is gonna go under. There is questions if you do it multiple years in a row that, and, and financial experts will talk about this way more, but uh, the, if you run too many years in a row at a loss, come, like the, you know, the, the government will be like, why is your company still even afloat if you're running at losses all the time and all that kind of stuff. So it's not extremely uncommon for businesses to try and make it so their books come to as low or as a loss as possible. So therefore they don't actually pay taxes. So pretty much by the state of this book, it says that they shouldn't have to pay taxes in the UK. You might be wondering, why am I talking about two years ago here? Well, this financial audit of BSG for the 2022 year was only reported on the 30th of October, 2023, meaning that we likely won't be seeing anything of BSG's financials for 2023 until fall or winter of 2024. So what happened in 2023? Well, quite a few things actually. I may have gotten a bit in over my head in this next bit, but the research that I did on the financials of games marketing was utterly eye-opening to me. Last year was a special one for the world of Tarkov. We saw the biggest marketing push probably ever by Battlestate Games for the new spin-off Escape from Tarkov Arena. Arena was meant to be a more fun-focused, fast-paced way for fans of EFT to get that juicy player versus player action they yearn for. It was also, and this is the point that you should be most focused on, it was also intended to be a beginner's jumping off point to the Tarkov world, bringing in new audiences to the game. Okay, so in order to market this thing, BSG went to some conventions last year. Some big conventions. All right, so over the next period of time, he's gonna talk about how much it costs to go to conventions. I, I'm not gonna put you through the whole lot. You should watch the video if you wanna see all the details, but it works out he thinks about on average is around half a million per convention. And that's probably accurate, if not more. Um, I've heard um, people say that to get a major display at something like GamesCon, which BSG went to, it could be up to a million dollars. And I'm not going to make you go through the or watch me watch the next five minutes of the video just to go over that. But ultimately saying they marketed 
arena a lot. That is uh, with a fact and my, and I said this back in the microtransaction video and other videos that I, I honestly believe that they put a lot of eggs in their basket thinking that arena was gonna be like the next big thing and it flopped on uh, release because of a lot of issues. That was probably gonna be their, their way of floating the company a bit further. So therefore they would be able to make more money um, to be able to obviously keep their shareholders uh, happy, but also keep the game company running. Let's break down some realities here. Tarkov controversies aside, it probably raked in a similar amount of money in 2023 as it did in 2022, likely a bit more with all the marketing that they did. We also know that Escape from Tarkov Arena, a completely separate game, was developed by BSG likely over the last one and a half to two years that this standalone game was developed by a separate team of people, potentially many new hires and contractors, and that BSG underwent a massive marketing push for Arena during the 2023 year. We now know that in early 2024, BSG has introduced the idea of purchasable add-ons to Tarkov, never before mentioned, because in the words of Nikita, the COO, the game has been running for eight years without any additional cash flow. So I just wanna make a couple of points so I've seen pretty much the highs and lows of Tarkov over the past eight years or seven years. What has it been now? I've been playing it for nearly seven years. So obviously it was a pretty niche game. Wasn't very large uh, company in 2018, 19, 17. 2019, end, end of 2019, December, that's when the drops happened and it blew up like crazy. 2020 and 2021 was absolutely insane for Escape from Tarkov. It was hot property. Like they would have been selling game copies after game copies incredible amounts um there were f certain controversies during all those times and lull periods where the game was a bit numb and and people were like i can't be bothered playing it anymore but i think arguably saying it went really well the one thing that wasn't really spoken about in 2022 that would have drastically reduced game sales was the fact that the uh the uk ukraine invasion was pretty much a very rough period for escape from tarkov and no one being able to uh, no one wanting to promote it even talk about it and it was a very touchy uh, subject. It even feels weird even just bringing that up. But realistically, I think 2022 would have been their lowest sales by far based out of the like last four years. 2023, it definitely would have been back up because the way the world works, people just seem to just forget about stuff after a period of time. So sales would have gone back up in 2023. And I would be very surprised with also the hype of Arena, there would have been a lot more sales in 2023. So arguably speaking, sales would have been up a lot more in 2023 than 2022 by a considerable amount. So here's my concern, and maybe you're picking up where I'm going with this. The fear is that BSG's funding for the completion of Escape from Tarkov as well as the continued development for Arena was secured only by the projected profits earned from Arena's sales boosted by the marketing push over the 2023 year. And I'm concerned that Arena may not have sold as well as they had projected. For whatever reason, maybe because of controversy, maybe because of poor communication by BSG, or maybe because of the game's design itself, people don't seem to be utterly enamored with Arena in the way that BSG was hoping, to put it lightly. I don't want to say I told you so at moments, but literally months before Arena came out, I was saying that I couldn't see Arena surviving past a few weeks or months for the fact that Escape from Tarkov Arena just, it was trying to be Counter-Strike and, and Valorant with Tarkov mechanics, and they really had to hit it exactly right to make it work and i saw so many flaws with it as soon as it came out that i just feel like if they just did like a, a one week play test people would have brought it out and that all those issues out earlier we're not talking about you know if, if arena's gonna survive or not but ultimately they've got a lot of work to do to make it actually get back into the into the positive light again but yeah arena they had a lot of eggs in that basket and it flopped hard no matter how many fireworks you set off no matter how many tournaments you plan if people look up a game online and the first thing that they see is this game is disappointing they might think twice about buying it and if they staked the production funding of both games on the successful release of Arena after a large multi-million dollar marketing push, well, it's possible that Battlestate is currently in an over-leveraged position. They may have made a gamble and missed. Okay, so here's where I want to take a pause. Like I said at the very beginning, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to make this video, and that's not because I fear backlash or hate or ridicule. It's because I actually really, really, really love this game. Now, this is a very common a common thought that goes through a lot of creators that make videos about this game that play it a lot. It's like, sometimes it's really difficult to make a negative video about Escape from Tarkov because we all love the game very much. And I think he's about to talk about it now is very people get very hypercritical of Escape from Tarkov and the devs of it to the point where they're kind of really rude and toxic and it's very common across a lot of games these days where people don't even give anyone a chance 
to actually enjoy a game or or promote a game or anything like that because of how negative people can be and hypercritical. Indescribable respect for the pure artistic genius that went into creating what it is. And facing the financial reality of a piece of art that you really adore kind of kills the art of it in a way. Despite the cheeky sort of negative seeming title, the very last thing that I want to do is kill Tarkov. I'll just make the very one single point here. The only thing that's going to kill Tarkov is Battlestate games. I have seen so many things come out of Escape from Tarkov over the last six years. The wiggle that killed Tarkov, the fucking the stuff in like 2018 where BSG like copyright strike someone and caused the biggest controversy. There was, I, don't, I can't remember, Ukraine being invaded by Russia. There's so many things that have been happening. The thing that will kill Tarkov is Battlestate game. I'm gonna put it out there. That's the only thing I can imagine ever seeing kill Tarkov. Only what the cost of development at BSG is, where those tens of millions of dollars go, nor should we, to be fair. Something I realized as I was writing this video, the gaming community is hyper critical of Battlestate games. It's kind of sad, really. We all theoretically love this game, and yet we tear apart every single decision that they make. We look at every aspect of their development under a microscope. I'm not sure if other communities treat their favorite games devs that way, but to be honest, I really don't like the idea of being part of that. To very quickly touch on the cost though, think about this one metric. Tarkov is running 5,000 or more servers, according to Nikita. For a minimum of $100 to $300 a month per server, that's anywhere from six to as high as 18 to $30 million a year alone. The main concern I had, remember, is that Tarkov's cost of sales went up drastically in 2023, and the sales themselves didn't compensate. We need to touch on those 900,000 new accounts purchased in 2022. I've never given much thought to the idea of cheaters rebuying accounts as a legitimate major source of Tarkov's funding. Seeing that metric was the first time that I had to face it head on. Now, one thing I do want to touch on that he didn't actually, I, I think, really nail down was he says that BSG is running at a loss and not being able to fund itself based off what Nikita said. And that's literally just one comment on one Reddit post based off BSG. So like there is emphasis that BSG could be completely fine, but they're just trying to secure their future and the development of like, I don't know if they're going to go all the way to Russia 2028 kind of thing, or if it's going to be, you know, like what they want to do in the future. But ultimately saying that we don't know the actual exact financial status of BSG, you know, or if it's just the fact that, you know, off, off their financial records, I can tell you for a fact, like if you go into those financial records, I can guarantee you that this is going to be very like upsetting for some people, but the stakeholders get paid out a large amount of money. I'm talking in the millions every time there's a financial year. So, you know, it's not like, you know, if they really wanted to float the company, there's millions of dollars there that they could just flick across and go, I'll pay myself a bit less in the stakeholders sum, you know, and therefore, you know, Battlestate Games can stay afloat for multiple years. It's not like they're struggling to get by day to day. I'll put it that way. Concern is that cheaters are funding the game, something that regardless of how things look can never be officially proven. We know that anti-cheat is a constant concern of the legit player base, something that we all want to get better. But would not placing the spending power back in the hands of the dedicated legitimate fan base through microtransactions in whatever form potentially reduce the power that these cheap providers hold in general over BSG? Even if it means BSG going back on their word, which is the lesser of two evils? I'll let you decide, but I think the choice is obvious. So I think this is probably the major point that comes away from this video. If, if you don't understand what he's trying to say is if BSG have a chokehold on themselves from the fact or oh, sorry the cheaters have a chokehold on bsg for the fact that bsg needs to have cheaters buy the game so and then bsg has to ban them so then they can buy the game again to keep the cash flow churning because they don't have enough new players coming in if microtransactions is the change that would help them go hey we can ban cheaters because we still have the cash flow from microtransactions which is the lesser of two evils and that's the point he's trying to make and when, when we talk of microtransactions we're not saying that you know you'd be able to buy rubles he's saying you know have a cat in the in the hideout that you could buy or you know get early access to some of the skins in the game or you know the extra stash the stash rows in your hideout so that's the kind of stuff they're talking about here not you know buying items in the game but more the microtransactions that just give you cosmetics and and you know a little bit of quality of life stuff at the end of the day what matters most is that the core tone and vision of the game itself is upheld in one way or another it's dark and foreboding atmosphere it's deep brutally challenging and rewarding grind those things make the game what it is as long as that remains the case we'll be okay because here's the thing truly and i do say this wholeheartedly what's done is done 
If we want the game to succeed, to exist, Nikita has done, I think, the best he can right now. Regardless of how BSG got to where it's currently at, he personally admitted that the game needs more funding. If that is an honest statement on his part, then what else can they do? The choice is fund the game or let it die. If they're really just being greedy, if they really just wanted more money, I think that they would have done this a long time ago. All right. And I think that's a fair statement towards the end. BSG could just let the game die or they're trying to find a way to keep it funded. And I think there is a bit of face value. Like we need to take it as BSG is telling the truth and the key is telling the truth that the game needs to have some sort of more constant flow of revenue. Otherwise, it will struggle to get development in the future years. But this video is, um, I think, is a very good take on looking at BSG and Escape from Tarkov from a different angle. Why microtransactions have come into the game and also, you know, the future of Escape from Tarkov. I don't think BSG is going to disappear overnight. I think they've definitely got time before the game or Escape from Tarkov would disappear due to finances. But, you know, it is actually a smart business decision to decide if they are going to do something about it now or wait till it's too late and we do see games in the in the past go oh shit we're out of money and then they do ridiculous stuff all of a sudden and the game dies anyway because it wasn't able to float itself so i think it's a smart business business decision from escape from tarkov and battle state games but there was a little bit of negative backlash but i think people will see the reasoning from it and i think this video is just a great video in general give it a like make sure you uh you subscribe and do the same to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and comment for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. Help me get to the million subs and then also um, go to this video and watch it there. Give them some love. I don't generally do reaction videos and watch videos like this, but it popped up in my feed and I was like, you know what, I'll give this a watch. And I was very entertained and I thought it was very informative. If you wanna go look at the financial records, they're actually underneath the video. I think he's got all the reference points here. You can look up the financial records and dabble into it as much as you like. You can see how much Nikita pays himself and all that stuff and you'll understand what the stakeholders are being paid and all that. So I thought it was interesting you didn't include all that because it, that probably would have brought a little bit more hate, hate into the video. But yeah, I think I'll leave it there and uh, I won't ramble on anymore. So much love. And lastly, guys, I'll see you next time.